Welcome to our environmentally themed Earth Day edition of Core Connection. I'm your host, Patrick Bluggett, and I'm here at the Lynn Haven River Basin Ecosystem Restoration Project in Virginia Beach, Virginia, where our Norfolk District, in partnership with the City of Virginia Beach and the Virginia Beach Public School District, are working hand in hand along with local nonprofit environmental agencies to restore the ecosystem of this waterway in the Chesapeake Bay. USACE is restoring historic oyster reefs, submerged aquatic vegetation, and reef habitat, as well as wetlands in the watershed to help the estuary. These habitats provide protection to shorelines from erosion, reduce impacts of wave surge, increase resilience, improve water quality, and provide fish and wildlife habitat for the waters in the community. Across the nation, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has one of the largest environmental restoration and environmental compliance roles in the federal government. As a result, our environmental mission touches the lives of nearly every American. Some of the projects and initiatives we are going to highlight on this edition of Core Connection. Here in Virginia and in Maryland, USACE is working with interagency partners in both states to restore native oyster populations and tributaries in the Chesapeake Bay. Oysters provide a number of environmental benefits, including reef habitat that is significant to the bay ecosystem for other animals like blue crabs and fish. Additionally, oysters are filter feeders that improve water quality. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers delivers engineering solutions today that sustain our environment and secure the mission moving forward. These efforts include providing ecological and economic benefits through the protection of ecosystems, as is the case with two projects the Baltimore District has been working on over the years. Poplar Island is a national model for habitat restoration and the beneficial reuse of dredged material. Working in partnership with federal and state agencies, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is restoring Poplar Island in the Chesapeake Bay by using dredged material from the Baltimore Harbor and Channels Project, which helps ensure safe navigation and contributes to the regional and national economy. Approximately 68 million cubic yards of dredge material is being placed to develop approximately 775 acres of wetlands, 830 acres of uplands, and 110 acres of open water embayment. Meanwhile, the residents of Smith Island, Maryland, got a first-hand look at how beneficial reusing dredge material from one of their navigation channels can help the environment, as well as directly benefit the economy of their island. Severe erosion and shoaling in the channel at Rhodes Point on Smith Island have historically caused watermen to have to take inconvenient routes around Smith Island to access deeper portions of the Chesapeake Bay, leading to lost time and increased fuel costs. The Baltimore District completed a navigation improvement project that increases the navigational clearance and provides boaters from Smith Island towns of Rhodes Point and Tylerton with more direct access to the Chesapeake Bay through trudging and the construction of jetties. Secondary benefits from the project include shoreline protection and wetland restoration that aid in the protection of larger wetland systems and provide habitat for local animals and vegetative resources. Our efforts to protect and preserve the environment is an enduring mission, one that we will continue to advance. Key to this embracing new technology and applying innovative solutions. Scientists and engineers with our U.S. Army Engineering Research and Development Center are hard at work studying ways to control invasive species and help endangered species throughout the U.S. They give us a behind-the-scenes look at the work they are doing and the facilities they are working in. Hi, my name is Alan Katzmeyer. I'm the Chief of the Aquatic Ecology and Invasive Species Branch at ERDIC. Today, we're at the Aquatic and Wetland Ecosystem Research and Development Center. I'm going to show you around the facility and some of the work we have going on for endangered species conservation and invasive species management. Hey, my name's Ian Knight. I'm a research biologist with the Environmental Lab, and I work on the bi uh, biological control of invasive aquatic weeds. At the moment, I am working on the alligator weed flea beetle, which is a biological control agent of alligator weed. Uh, alligator weed was introduced to the U.S. in the 1800s and was actually part of a really successful biological control program in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, but what wound up happening was uh, over the subsequent decades, alligator weed has started to move northward into more temperate climates and has become an invasive species in, uh, in temperate climates where the tropical beetles have failed to establish. So the work I'm doing at the moment is investigating cold tolerance among different populations of beetles that have already been uh, released into the US and comparing them with populations from South America along with some collaborators with USDA ARS. And hopefully we'll be able to identify populations of flea beetles uh, that are putatively more cold tolerant and more suitable for biological control in these temperate climates. Hey, I'm Audrey Harrison and I'm a research entomologist here at ERDIC. Um, I'm working on a macroinvertebrate colonization study in the lower Mississippi River. Aquatic macroinvertebrates are the invertebrates that live underwater and the Mississippi River is full of them. 
And with this project, which is a colonization study of macroinvertebrates, we are looking at different natural and artificial riverine substrates and seeing what types of macroinvertebrates are associated with different substrate types or habitat types underwater. The importance of doing that is to be able to figure out which habitats hold the most biological diversity, which habitats we want to protect, enhance, create more of, or conserve. And um, in doing so, we have a way to quantify the benefit of various restoration projects in the Lower Mississippi River. Today I'm going to be talking to you about some of the research we're doing on big head carp. What we're really focused on in this lab right now is how carp interact with increased salinity. So we're exposing them to an acute salinity experiment where we greatly increase salinity over a matter of minutes and a chronic salinity experiment where we slowly dose them with higher and higher amounts of salinity over a one to two week period. The reason we're interested in this is because as we operate flood control structures and during regular flood events, sometimes we create freshwater bridges out in the Mississippi River and we want to make sure those bridges don't create new pathways for those carp to spread. Invasive species really impact our native ecosystems by pretty much outcompeting our native species. Native species are going to have natural predators, whereas an introduced species may not. Therefore, it can grow and double much faster than the native species, effectively outcompeting them for food and resources. Out of the lab and into the field, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is busy working to restore native species back in their habitats. The San Francisco District is working to restore native salmon in the estuaries of California. My name is Ben White. I'm a supervisory fish biologist for the Army Corps of Engineers, the San Francisco District. So we're at the Lake Sonoma uh, Warm Springs Fish Hatchery, also known as the Don Clausen Fish Hatchery, and we're currently at the Coho Building. Um, so there's two programs at this uh, hatchery. Um, and uh, I oversee the Russian River Coho Broodstock Program. Basically, we have uh, different year classes of coho salmon. Um, coho are on a very rigid three-year life cycle, so we have three year classes of coho, uh, fish that are uh, only a couple weeks old, um, to fish that are a year old, um, to our oldest that are uh, now a little over two years old. Um, but this is where all of the rearing takes place for the coho program. Uh, we're trying to reestablish natural populations of coho salmon throughout the watershed to prevent extinction and to eventually um, create self-sustaining runs. So today we have Rory Taylor, uh, Ken Leister, and Emily Van Cedars. We are all out in the field releasing fish into Mark West Creek today. So we released 10,000 juvenile coho at the smolt stage. These are basically one-year-old fish that are getting ready to make the transition from the freshwater environment to the marine and saltwater environment. So we release fish into streams that historically had wild coho, Mark West being one of them, um, but we release fish into up to 20 different creeks throughout the year. Uh, so Mark West just happened to be the, the creek we are working on today. Um, we release different life stages into different creeks, so Mark West is one of the creeks that we conduct smolt releases into. Whether it's restoring fish and habitat, or for our own drinking water, taking care of our planet's natural water systems is vital for our own health, as our Pittsburgh district would like to remind you. If you care about your body, take care of your waterways. If you care about your waterways, take care of the earth. Restore our earth. Happy Earth Day. Back here in Virginia, the work in the Lynn Haven River is ongoing and will be completed in multiple phases. Phase one, which started recently, includes eight acres of reef habitat restoration, 7.1 acres of wetlands and riparian buffer, as well as 6.3 acres of submerged aquatic vegetation located in strategic locations throughout the watershed. These are just a handful of projects that are going on throughout USACE. And while progress has been made for our planet, there is still more work to be done, and together we will continue to advance our collective efforts for the greater good of our environment and our nation. For the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, I'm Patrick Bloodgood, and this has been a special edition of Core Connection.